Good evening, Toastmasters and most welcome guests. I'd like to talk to you tonight about being who you are. And I was thinking about myself recently, and there's a couple of things in my childhood that I think back to, well, who makes me what I am, and uh, kind of some stories. Actually, I have three stories that I want to share with you uh, about my life. And I always, for some reason, always look back at these three and find some kind of energy and to keep on going. So maybe you can find some inspiration through my story and maybe look into your own personal stories of what can inspire you to be who you are and also on top of that, um, give you some sense of uh, being and being. So the first story that I'd like to talk to you about is when I was in third grade. And I'd like to find out from a show of hands, has anybody here, uh, being young, pushed the rules or broken the rules or uh, did anything bad? I did. That <laughs> <laughs> a little story. So for me personally, I was raised in a family where I have a brother who's handicapped and he's mute. And all through my whole life, I've had to deal, I've had a lot more responsibility than probably like another little girl my age probably have to deal with. And that responsibility makes me who I am today. When a lot of people see me, they go, why do you have this like stout attitude about you? Or if I'm in a room, people look to me as a leader. And I think it's just because I'm so used to having this responsibility sometimes that it just falls on me. But this is a little story that, um, so I wasn't that bad of a kid, per se, because I always had to be very good because my family. But in third grade, this teacher had a rule, and we started bringing all these stuffed animals to school. And we brought all the stuffed animals to school. And then finally, the teacher got so upset because we'd always bring bags of animals to school. He goes, no more stuffed animals. Only one kid can bring one stuffed animal to school. So then I went shopping with my mom the next day. And there was a stuffed animal that just had come out. And it was like a little toy dog or cat. And this cat or dog had these fluffy tails that were detachable. It had five, six, seven, eight, nine, like this long tail that grew from this one toy. So I brought this toy to school. All the kids were passing the toy around. And all of a sudden, I had all this whole toy on my desk. And it got upset with me. And the teacher said, why do you have nine toys with you. I go, teacher, it's only one toy. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Long, big toy, one. So I thought that's always one story that always brings back, makes me think about who I am. It's always bending the rules. How far can you push what somebody tells you to do and um, basically get away with having a bunch of toys still? So that was story number one. Story number two. I was always a kid that never did my homework. I never practiced, I never studied. I had so much, my parents had so much other things to worry about in their life, rather than kind of what was going on with me, that it didn't seem to be that big of a deal. So in fifth grade, a teacher decided to send me a composition book that had a list of all my homework. And in this list of all the homework, I had to go in and have my parents sign it after every day. And they signed this list. Well, one day at school, we were supposed to have a Thanksgiving project. And every, everybody bought $5 to have make go into the big auditorium and make these little tiny styrofoam toys for Thanksgiving. Well, the teacher called on me, Melissa, my desk. So I sat down. Yes, can you show me your composition book? Oh, that reminds me. I'm supposed to have it signed, isn't I? Pull it out. No signature. Oh, off to detention you go. I went to a private Christian school. Off to detention I was. All by myself in this detention room, waiting and waiting. So they said to me, Melissa, what are you, you're never doing, do your homework, you never do anything, what are you going to do? I don't know, 
well, you're not going to be able to go to the Thanksgiving auditorium thing that I've been dying to go for for like two weeks for my five dollars to do this Thanksgiving event. And I sit in this little room. They go, you're not allowed to leave here until you write a five to seven page book report as a fifth grader. That's pretty, pretty long. Well. well, I went down to the library at the school. I picked out a book in the library. And then I was escorted back up into the attention room where it was like, kind of like the principal's office. And they told me from there, you need to finish this book report. So I picked Old Yeller. And lucky enough, I had just seen Old Yeller the week before <laughs> on TV. I was so excited. So I started writing on my paper, writing on my paper, writing on my paper, skimming through the book, writing down. Lunchtime, I get a little door open. It's a teacher looking at me, wondering what's going on in there. About Two o'clock rolls around when it's time for us to have this Thanksgiving auditorium thing with the whole entire school. I finish my paper. Teacher comes in, really upset. Cannot believe that I had done this five to seven page book report of Old Yeller in a matter of like hours for a kid who never even does any homework. So I come back and uh, they had to let me go. The principal said, got to let her go. She did her book report. So I went ahead and so excited to make a styrofoam little turkey. That, that was it. <laughs> um, actually, I do have one more story. I'm going to make a quick last story that I think is really interesting that always brings up my mind is um, when I was in seventh grade. And in seventh grade, we used to sell candy. And we'd always get in trouble for selling candy. There was one kid, he had these candies, and he called them super lemons. He wouldn't tell anybody else in the school where he bought this candy. And it was some Asian candy was written with little, like, scribbles on it. I didn't know what it was at a kid at a time. So I went through, and I, I went through in the phone book, and I called every single Asian little quickie mark, whatever, and asked them who sold it. And then I convinced my dad to go get me this candy, gave me, drive me down. I found the candy, bought the bag took it back to school, and totally wiped out this kid's business. <laughs> so, in essence, short, I just want you to think about the little things in your life that you do, that sometimes maybe you have like no drive or desire, but something can give you this drive and desire to go do something and push somebody a little bit harder um, than you thought you could push them or push yourself. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed